Hello, squad fam. So I said I would try to do a Sunday video. I'm going to try. My phone is charging. I just finished a three hour live stream on Friday. I'm going to try to do a live stream every Thursday. As long as the weather holds out on Thursday, because if it's raining, I can't be in the backyard. And obviously my phone's good for about three hours on full charge. So we can definitely do a nice live stream every Thursday. So that's what we'll do. I'm going to try while my phone is charging to do a little video uh, on the computer. So it doesn't turn around, so it's going to be interesting to see how I can film the other side of this, but we're going to try. I got this cute little vending machine, and what I want to do today is something different. We're going to pull the lever, get a crystal out, and then I'm going to tell you about the crystal all its properties and all fun stuff so i figured we'd do that since last week at the end of my video um we had how to start your healing crystal set so now let's see how this works no ah, we got our crystal okay what is it oh it is a rose quartz so let's let's do something with rose quartz i'll tell you all about rose quartz i told you a little about healing properties but let's see all its properties and how it can help you in the paranormal so let's find out all about the rose quartz since that's the one that came out <laughs> The use of rose quartz is said to date back as far as 7,000 BC. It's also been claimed that the Egyptian and the Roman women used rose quartz face masks to clear their complexions and prevent wrinkles. Oh, wow, I'll be trying that. Today, rose quartz is often used as jewelry for meditation or as decoration in homes and offices. The rose quartz is a pale pink stone that's part of the quartz family. Deeper pink varieties of the stones are sometimes called strawberry rose quartz. Lavender rose quartz varieties are pale purple. Rose quartz is a mineral compound primarily of silicon dioxide molecules that typically molecules that typically form at about 752 Fahrenheit to 1,292 Fahrenheit, which is 400 Celsius to 700 Celsius. The crystal can be found across the United States, Australia, Brazil, Madagascar, South Africa, India, Sweden, and Germany. Hmm. Okay, while there are no scientific evidence, let me try to get you out of the sun a little bit. I don't know, it's sunny now, now that it's getting dark, it's sunny. While there's no scientific evidence that rose quartz offers any healing benefits, they're still commonly used for healing purposes. Rose quartz is perhaps the best known for being the stone of unconditional love. It is believed by some to admit a strong vibration of love, joy, and emotional healing. Rose quartz is a powerful healing crystal, S says crystal healer and Reiki master Keith Birch. It's soft, gentle, almost pastel. Pale pink color is a good indication of the most commonly known property, that of pure love. It's a stone of both giving and receiving love. As Birch says, rose quartz is believed by many to encourage the qualities of love. However, it's important to note that there's a lack of research, research to support these claims. So guys, what you have to do is what? Go out and start scientifically proving this stuff. We'll be millionaires. Okay? <laughs> There's actually little research at all or evidence to support any crystal benefits. Now, there is, however, 
an older study presented at two international conferences in 1999 and 2001 that suggests that any spiritual, emotional, or healing benefits experienced from crystal may be the result of a placebo effect. In the study, 80 volunteers were given booklet, booklets explaining the sensations they might experience while holding crystals. Half of the participants were given genuine gemstones and the other half received fake made of plastic. The study found that the, the participants holding the fake crystals were just as likely to report sensation that those that had been giving the real ones. So basically it's mind over matter, they think, or people are liars. That's how it goes. But I know since I've been wearing the crystals, I've had a lot of like help with grounding and stuff, especially like the clear quartz near my throat chakra and stuff. So I think that maybe because like they can't prove paranormal stuff because they say there's no evidence idiots that they're just they're not in touch with the spiritual side of it so people who are more spiritually intuitive i think gets more out of the crystals than um people who are yeah, you know let me just buy this crystal it's pretty i'm gonna put it in a ring so yeah even so many people still use crystals as part of their healing practices. The rose quartz is believed to embody powerful healing qualities that may be both beneficial to your physical and emotional health. It's said that rose quartz can heal relationship problems, promote mutual understanding, inspire an attitude of compassion and kindness. It's also believed that it can boost the feelings of peace, calm, and self-love. Rose Quartz has deep healing of the heart. The Rose Quartz is also believed to have the benefits for physical health, particularly when worn or carried on your body. Rose Quartz is especially powerful when worn close to the heart, Birch claims. Rose Quartz wards off negativity and it even carry and even when carried on your person, helps to replace negative emotions with positive, returning the wearer to a place of pure love, peace, and balance. That said, you should never use a crystal to replace the advice and treatment of your healthcare professional. And this was written by Healthline, so you know what they're getting at. <laughs> take medication instead of crystals, but I more like the crystal idea if you, especially if you just promoting peace and kindness. How's the doctor going to do that for you? So yeah, I'll take the rose quartz. Let's see if we could get another crystal out of there. Alrighty. <laughs> so now that we did the rose quartz, let's see if we can get another one out of here. Let's see. Oh my god, oh, it's a twofer! Weren't we just talking about that in my live stream, Benny? Two for one! Okay, wow, one wouldn't fit out of there before and now we got two. Amazing. Okay, <laughs> let's see what we got here. And I probably don't, I probably have to look them up because maybe I won't know what they are because I just got a lot of these from Etsy. I should probably not take this all the way out because I'm... Um, Having technical difficulties getting it back in. It's bothering the poor drawer. So one is like an orangey one. And where are you going, Crystal? One's like an orangey one. And one's a green. Which... This might be, um... Adventuring? I don't know what the orange one is, so we're going to check it out and see. So this orangey white one that I can't kind of figure out what it was, I didn't know exactly because it came in a mixed bag. To me, it's either calcite or scoliocyte, which the names would be down here. 
Um, so I'm, I'll read both. <laughs> we're not gonna guess. We're just gonna learn everything. Wow, it says it's used as a construction material. It's so pretty. Would you want to use it in construction? Yeah. Calcite is common yet complex. It's a common yet complex crystal. It is a carbonate mineral that comes in a range of different shades. Calcite can be clear or white. It could also be brown, red, orange, blue, green, yellow, among other colors. Calcite means strength of spirit and energy. Hmm. With its burst of citrus fresh fabulousness <laughs> and its incredible amplifying energy, calcite is a stone that kisses you with a surge of energy. Ever ready to light a fire in your soul for those times in life when you feel like you need a complete spring cleaning, calcite can swoop in and bring it. It gets rid of your old stagnant habits and leaves you dancing light on your feet. The meaning of calcite comes from an ancient Greek word, calyx, and the Latin word calx which basically translate to lime. Rather than referring to the color, the link to the lime is a nod to its makeup of crystallized limestone. Calcite is a calcium carbonate mineral, and if it looks familiar with its mystical shimmer, it's because you have probably captured admiring it before in various places because it's used in construction. Calcite comes with many names in its modern world. You may hear it referred to as clear calcite, Iceland spar, calspar. It is mined across the world, but most notably, it is uncovered in the mines of Eastern Europe, Belgium, Great Britain, Romania, Romania Mexico, Nabia and the United States, and of course, the land of ice and fire itself, Iceland. Interesting. Calcite can come in beautiful range of colors from clear ice to citrus, bright orange. Each brings its own radiant energy, but all calcites are here to encourage creative expression, wash away negativity, and to nurture emotional healing so you can lead the life you were born to live. If you want to know more about this amazing crystal, you can just keep on reading. <laughs> so then it tells you the differences between like the orange calcite and the blue calcite. Um, I've seen blue calcite, but I never seen like an orangey white one. Uh, well, I probably did. I just didn't know it was calcite. The green calcite, oh, it's beautiful. So it tells you all the different properties of the different color ones and it shows you all oh, any one. Gorgeous, hey, gorgeous. Okay. Oh, it's an all around great healer when it comes to keeping your body, mind, and spirit in tip top shape. Whether gleaming with citrus shades or as clear as glacier ice, calcite is an amazing stone to clear out blockages Activate the chakras and get you ready for a higher spiritual connection. Take a look at all the ways in which this can bring back your balance. So, yes, this is an awesome stone to put in your collection, which we have a lot of pretty stones already. Ooh, but that, that just keeps going. So many things. Calcite is also known to help your bones and skeletal system um, encourage blood circulation, immune health. People 
keeps people growing in strength and spirit. Works as an organ detox. It helps with your bladder and kidneys. <laughs> it helps with arthritis. Like, it just keeps going. So get yourself every single color of calcite. Keep them in a bag. Put them in your bra. If you don't wear a bra, if you're a guy, you, or you're just a girl who doesn't want to wear a bra, you get a pocket. Yes, or a little fanny pack. Because <laughs> you need... Lots of calcite in your life. Now let's look up what this other green one is. Like I said, I'm pretty sure it's a ventrine, but I will make sure. And that's uh, scoliocyte. That's what I'm going to call it. <laughs> Scoliocyte's unique structure has made it a favorite among geologists. It forms a cluster of sharp prismatic needle-like points, which often radiate outwards from the source. All, uh, or alternatively crisscross with each other to form sculptures that are truly a natural art form. There's no other crystal in the world that shares Scoliac's exact formation, making it highly distinctive and unique for both aesthetic and crystallogical purposes. When sanded and polished into tumbles, the tumble stone forms the streaks of these needles remain visible. If the stone was to be cracked in half, they would reappear. That is to say, even a smooth one is not solid inside. When these needles are exposed to heat, they twist and curl up, which is where they get their name of this stone comes from. Scolakis, that's Greek, which means worm in Greek. Yes, I knew that. Scolakis so Greek. I, I, I rather call it that. Skulakis is mainly found in India. <laughs> then why'd the Greeks name it? <laughs> Lord have mercy. They couldn't come up with a name, I guess, in India, and so the Greeks were like, this is what we're calling it. <laughs> it's mainly found in India, although there is also deposits of white uh, Skulakis in Iceland, <laughs> most scolite crystals are white or clear, but the presence of trace minerals within the crystal matrix can turn them pink, red, or green. Different colors of sco scolio, you know, will take on slightly different energies, although the underlying properties will remain relatively similar. If you are interested in choosing a stone that will help you with the color and your energy goals. Hmm. The power of this stone is a rebalancing stone, especially for people who have spent large amounts of times in high energy environments. In Chinese philosophy, this is associated with a yin energy in contrast to yang energy. So the stone is a yin, not a yang. <laughs> yang energy is outward focused, whereas yin energy is inward focused and promotes self-love and self-healing. If you have spent a significant amount of time in yang environments, such as high-powered work environments, social events, you may need a good dose of yin. And this is the stone for you, if that is that. If not, well, I'm going to get one and see what it looks like. <laughs> this is especially important for people. Maybe that's why the picture I saw said rare, because it's rare to find orange, maybe. Um, this is especially important for people um, to gain nice energy from being alone and their alone energy okay this stone will speed up the recharging process help you gather energy and calm yourself so that you are focused and ready for your next social yang focused event so that's that stone so that's an important one to have too maybe if you're a big city person yes get yourself that stone skolakis is adventuring it is a light adventuring 
And the reason you could tell it's a Venturine light, I thought so, is because you see the dark lines through it. That's usually a common sign that it's a Venturine. And they can go anywhere from light green to dark forest green. So, yeah. It is usually... It's a style of a quartz. It's usually mixed with quartz. It's commonly green, but it also comes in shades of blue, red, orange, gray, and brown. It has plenty of minerals. Uh, and because it has a lot of quartz, it always has like a little shimmer, like this one. Like here you can kind of see, I'm not going to see it on here probably, but you can see like that it has the quartz kind of appearance in inside the tumble. Adventuring's meaning is prosperity and confident. Okay, it's from the Italian word for chance said to be the stone that guarded the shields of the Amazon. Hmm. The gem is for prosperity and confidence. Um, it has a hint of great fortune in this stone that can be bestowed upon you. Wow. With a name that rolls off the tongue like a romantic poetry and its gorgeous color schemes, you cannot help but fall <laughs> hard for the sparkling glass stone that instantly connects with all your positive powers stashed deep inside you. Adventuring comes from places that have high natural energy. It is mined in a kaleidoscope color lands of India, the human depths of the wild and the unbridled Amazon jungle, some corners of Russia, and the lush green mountains of Brazil and Chile. It's a form of quartz that often comes to us in a dark green, um, but the colors can fluctuate with even some suggestions of gold adventuring. Perhaps it's the golden quality that makes it a sought-after gem, but for centuries, centuries, Adventurine was called the Stone of the Amazon, and it was said to be the stone that guarded the shield of the Amazon warrior queens, tapping into divine femininity, fierce power, and protection. Adventurine is a heart chakra stone. It's always ready to rouse those feelings of far-flung love and fantasy, but in a way that feels strong and healthy. Ever ready to rise you up, it's a comfort harmonizer and super handy stone to have stashed for yourself. If you want to bring a little more luck into the world. <laughs> Whether you need a little flush of added wealth and extra abundance of love and friend or friendship, or a little bit of both, Adventuring wants one thing from you to succeed in all your amazing endeavors, no matter how big or small they may be. For those who want to shine a light on the potent healing properties of Adventuring, but there is blue. Uh, the blue helps you gain spiritual guidance. It intuitively connect to the head and your heart. So you can own your own truth. It's connected to the heart chakra and the third eye chakra. It's a great help to heal mental health. Okay. Red Aventurine, a stone of manifestation and magical actions. Red Aventurine packs quite a punch. The fiery shoes tap into your inner fiery self, also known as our life force. When our life force is stirred, it rises up and helps us fine-tune our energies and get the job done. It is good for balance, the nervous system, and fertility issues. Adventuring is the stone that glows with thousands of healing benefits. While it's an exceptional tool for lifting the mind and soul and magic to your body. And it brings a jangle back to your nervous system, back into balance. 
For those who feel frayed and burned out, Aventurine, Aventurine will help with your blood pressure, regulate your thyroid glands, lend a hand when it comes to lifting your energy, connect with your heart, um, boost your circulation. It's an amazing stone to have close in hand for those recovering from a long illness. Thanks to the fine-tuned Lucky Streak, people can also turn Aventurine turn to adventuring when it comes to solving fertility issues and finding a path to parenthood also brings an abundance of positivity encourages decisive ac actions so it's good with mental healing clears the heart chakra helps you overcome old patterns it is the birthstone of cancer but it's good for aries and leo too which i'm an aries so Yay for me. Okay, it, in the mythical, now we're going to go into birthstones and everything. We're going to just tell you everything. In the mythical birthstone chart, Aventurine is the birthstone of the Cancer. Those who are born under the banner house of Cancer can be quite susceptible to fear and waves of anxiety. And Aventurine is ready to clear out those non serving feelings and thought patterns um, and give you a better mindset to drive you forward. For Aries, it's a is another sign that needs an intricate, intricate connection with a calming stone like the nature of adventuring. Yeah, because I'm a feisty little one. <laughs> Especially when it comes to upping those leadership skills. As Aries can be a passionate and fiery sign, amen, adventuring truly helps to resign this in turns it all the passion into a perfect flow. Also lending a hand when it comes to gentle, tactful approach to diffusing situations instead of telling you to go fuck yourself. Have your adventuring on hand. <laughs> I block out that beep. I was supposed to do that. Okay. okay. So anyway, yes. So it's good for everybody. Leos also can get <laughs> attached to considering what other people think, and adventuring stops the halt to this behavior in its tracks. So instead of holding onto negative emotions swirling through patterns and getting caught in a web of overanalyzing things you say and do, adventuring steps in, divert your energy to a more rewarding place. Wow, it just ugh. this website gives you a whole how to clean your gemstones. It gives you just a whole bunch of things. Um so yes. I I think that's my time. I'm like a comedian today. And I hope this suffices for a Sunday video. It was fun. And I do like reading all about the crystals. And um, yeah, I hope you guys do too. So, um, of course, let me know down in the comments <laughs> if you want me to keep talking about crystals. I'm happy to throw these in even when I go back to my Sinister Sundays. If you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. We have lots of variety of stuff here. We got meditation music, crystals, paranormal, history, all sorts of fun stuff. Crafts, whatever we could think of, whatever we could put in here. We do cooking, baking, yeah, you know, for animals, for people. We got all sorts of stuff. So we'd love to have you join our family. And uh, don't forget to like and share. And we'll see you on the next adventure. Thank you.